Again, good morning, brothers. Good morning. And like Peter, I have to say, it is good for us to be here, isn't it? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. As I was working on preparing this reflection for you, one thought kept, one question kept going through my mind. Why was there a transfiguration? Why did Jesus come to this mountain and reveal himself to three of his apostles? I think I came up with an answer, but I, we need to go back to contextualize this a little and go back to Caesarea in Philippi, where we were yesterday, many miles north of here. When Peter looked at Jesus and said, you're the Messiah. Maybe he even surprised himself with that response. But now it was official. You are the Messiah. If you recall, Jesus said, you're right, but let's not tell anyone now. If you go to the Gospel of Matthew, that confession was the turning point in Jesus' Galilean ministry. Because immediately after that, he became aware, it was his plan, to tell them, to prepare them for the days that lie ahead. Because what was going to happen is, he told them, he was going to go up to Jerusalem. They were going to accuse him of everything. They were going to arrest him, torture him, and eventually kill him. But that he would rise on the third day. He told them this. Now, Peter was one who was very good with the unsolicited recommendation. And his line was, no, Lord, you can't do that. That cannot happen. Jesus knew what his path was and therefore became very angry with Peter. He said, you're thinking in human ways, not the ways of God. So, right after that, he then, I, I, I lost my line of thought. Oh, so after that confession, after that admonition to Peter, he wanted to give his apostles, his followers, something to cling to. Because he knew how frightening, how discouraging, and how devastating the events in the next several days were going to be. He knew they would be facing hell. So what did he do? He brought three of his inner circle, Peter, James, and John, here, right here. He wanted to let them know who he really was, to encourage them and support them in the days ahead. So first of all, we see in the scene here that Jesus appeared with Moses and Elijah. To them, he was showing them that he was perfectly consistent with the law represented by Moses and all the prophets represented by Elijah. Indeed, he was the fulfillment of both. Now, again, Peter jumps in with another recommendation. It's really nice here. Let's build tents and stay. Now, we don't hear any response from Jesus, but I would speculate that he was thinking, no, Peter, get with the program. We're going on a journey, the way of the cross. We're not going to build tents and stay here. After that, 
Jesus appears as the Son of God. A light appears and a voice says, this is my beloved Son. Listen to him. Now again, Jesus tells them, we don't talk about it yet. Don't tell anyone of this at this point. So we have the confession at Caesarea in Philippi, you are the Messiah. We have the revelation, this is my beloved son. But don't tell anyone yet. My brothers, what does this have to do with us? It's a touching scene, a touching evolution of events. But what does it have to do with us? Well, I offer for your reflection to go to the passage between the confession of Peter, go to Matthew, between you are the Messiah and the transfiguration. What does Jesus talk about? Discipleship. And what does he say about being his disciple or his follower? If you want to be, Jesus says, if you want to be my follower, take up your cross and follow me. It's interesting what he says to his disciples because he's saying the same thing to us as seminarians, as deacons, as a priest. Take up your cross and follow me. Not take up our cross. You don't get to choose the cross. None of us gets to choose the crosses we want but we are given crosses. Now, as seminaries, as deacons, as priests, we are going to be given a whole series of crosses that we're going to have to carry in life. It might be a very difficult job, a job that you are working in a parish or in a, in a program that drains you every night every day. By the end of the day, you're exhausted because of the amount of energy it takes just to do this. So you might be facing the cross, carrying a cross also of discouragement, of fatigue, 